You know, normally when you think of the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, you think about, you know, stuff they're going to try to do to protect the environment, right? Or if you want to look at what they've been doing lately, stuff they're going to do to maybe circumvent what Congress could do but isn't doing, and the president decides to use them as one of his executive agencies to get around that. That's also true. But uh, you don't normally think of them as a haven for porn, fraud, and sexual abuse. No. I mean, that's not something the EPA is generally known for. But Dr. Tom Borelli has actually found a report that, that talks about that, and he's actually written about that. And he joins us this morning. He's a senior fellow with Freedom Works, and he is with us here on the Gary Sutton Show and a good friend as well. Dr. Tom, how you doing? Good morning, Gary. Thanks for having me back. EPA porn, fraud, and sexual abuse. I normally would not put them in the all-inclusive question, but there they are. Uh, what's going on here? <laughs> what we're missing is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> good I, Lord. I, I got to tell you, and you're leading with Teenage Wasteland from the Who is pretty good, too. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, what can we say? Um, I was doing some research, and I found a congressional hearing of an inspector general's report, the inspector general report on the EPA, and it really just uncovered and brought focus on the tremendous amount of mismanagement, at, you know, at the Environmental Protection Agency, where we basically have bureaucrats running wild. And there were three cases of pornography where uh, the bureaucrats were downloading and watching pornography for hours. Uh, downloading it onto their uh, government computers, meaning our computers, and then hours watching it. And, you know, tragically, one of these individuals is actually viewing child pornography. Oh, wow. And that individual is now uh, in prison. Uh, one of the other individuals who was viewing uh, pornography uh, on, on our government time, by the way, was viewing it, I believe, between one and four hours a day up to six hours a day, and this individual got a bonus and got time off for good performance. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so so we're paying the bill, the porn bill, for some of these people to be looking at this stuff on government time, being paid by government dollars, i.e. tax dollars. Right. It, it is just, just outrageous. And again, it just really shows the massive growth of government. No one can control this beast. It, it's pervasive in, in a lot of the agencies and departments, um, but, you know, it's particularly the EPA because they're so, we would think that they would be focused on protecting the environment, but, you know, th there are some people there who are probably trying to do a good job, but there are other people who are just radically abusing uh, their time and our taxpayers' money. When you look at this, Tom, and you say, okay, um where are the oversights? Where where are the immediate oversights? Where are the managerial uh, safety uh, latches that are built in to make sure this kind of thing isn't happening? Well, that's it, and, and that's really the major point. There is no oversight. It is it is a spiraling uh, bureaucracy out of control, where a lot of the employees must feel they could do whatever the hell they want, and no one's going to stop them. And you know, the bigger the bigger question here is, and this is why obviously EPA is at fault, EPA management's at fault. I mean, just think of it. Almost everyone, every one of these agencies and departments has an inspector general. In other words, a group that has to investigate the bureaucracy. <laughs> well, that, and that, that, that was my next question. Is, is this kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of, you know, this isn't by any means the only bureaucracy in Washington, D.C., oh, perish the thought, uh, but we've got it all over the place. I mean, it's like a disease. And, and so, so now you look around and people have long ago figured out how to hide in the midst of the bureaucracy. And obviously uh, there are a lot of people not following and looking we've seen other instances over the past bunch of years of conventions and people spending money for all kinds of things you ought not be spending money for uh and so it just it, it just seems to kind of pop up now and then so you're pretty sure that the blood that's running underneath the skin here is fraught with this kind of stuff aren't you oh, oh absolutely it wasn't it just yesterday inspector general's report on the tsa found that they failed 95 percent of the time yeah. i mean my god gary how hard do you have to try to to fail 95% of the time. I could put a bunch of high school kids on a TSA, and I'm sure they could do a better job and not fail 95%. Yeah, exactly right. And so, and, and so again, everywhere you look right now in government, and the EPA is no different from anybody else, everywhere you look in government, you see, holy crow, 
uh, it doesn't seem to be working all that particularly well. Now, some you know people who are out there that think government is the end all are going to say, oh, I can't believe you're beating up on them again. You're always beating up on government. But the fact is, uh, listen, if, if I am investing in something, if I'm buying something, uh, I don't want to use the word investing because that's what government does all the time when they want to raise my taxes, they invest. Uh, but if I'm going out and I'm buying a product and that product's not working, guess what? I'm going to stop buying it. My problem here is I don't get the choice to stop buying it. I got to keep on buying bad stuff. And that, as a consumer, as a taxpayer who's putting my money out there with the faith that it's being spent well and being spent in an accountable way, guess what? That's a pretty bad feeling. Oh, a- absolutely. And, you know, the tragic thing about all this is mo- most Americans don't realize this is really happening. You hear terms like, you know, the TSA or the NSA or even the EPA, the alphabet soup. Most Americans think that, you know, it's a government bureaucracy basically doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, and the, real, the real accountability here and the real failure really goes to Congress. It is Congress's job to fund these agencies and control these agencies. Right. And they have failed both parties miserably. And so what does it do then? It opens up the chance for executive uh, mismanagement and executive misuse of these agencies as hammers on the American people. Yeah, because the, the, the bottom line is, look, you could even be look go to the lowest learner back back in the IRS. You, you can be an activist for progressive causes, get paid by the government, get a good paying job, and they get bonuses. Yeah. Where else can this happen in life? Only in the government. One of the cases you pointed out, and you alluded to it there at the beginning, was John Beale, who received a 32-month <laughs> sentence, prison sentence, for defrauding the EPA. I mean, this story is unbelievable. It defrauded them out of nearly $900,000. For anybody that's thinking out loud, that's almost a million. Uh, and, and you talk in your article, you're an unbelievable tale. Beale convinced his supervisors he was an employee of the CIA. And over a nearly 10-year period, he missed more than two years of work while he claimed he was on assignments for the spy agency, which he didn't work for. He's working for the EPA. During the period of this, his deception, he collects his salary, he receives bonuses, and he charges the EPA for travel expenses, including <laughs> first-class air travel and top-of-the-line hotels. I mean, what is going on? I mean, it, it really, it, it, you can't make this stuff up. No. You, you really can't. If, you would, if I was to write this they would, you know, without the facts, they would, they would think I would be insane. Could you imagine uh, your employer there at the WSBA, well, I'm on a mission, find somebody yeah. else, and I'll come back uh, in a month or two. This is absolutely outrageous, totally unaccountable. But again, if you just peel the behind the scenes here, you know, peel the onion back a few, few pieces, just think of the arrogance that this guy had knowing that the incompetence of the agency, that he could do this and he wouldn't get caught. You mentioned the guy who got a 30-month prison sentence for downloading and watching child pornography on an EPA computer. Thomas Manning is his name. Uh, in addition to having the child pornography in the agency computer, he served as a Region 5 informative or information, excuse me, technology, he was very informative, uh, information technology specialist. He had tens of thousands of additional images of child pornography on a personal hard drive that he stored in his EPA workplace. Really? Yeah. It is just, it is, well, it is criminal. <laughs> it's criminal, but it is criminal. Um, what was going on there? And uh, did that, you just, the last two examples we mentioned of EPA bureaucrats, two of them are in prison. Yeah. Uh, and they should be. I mean, they should be. There's a third case of pornography you point out in there that involved employee B, as mentioned here. <laughs> Tell me about employee B. Um, well, employee B, I, I believe, was the individual who got uh, caught watching pornography, pornography Excuse me, during a take-your-kids-to-work day. <laughs> oh, my God. So imagine taking your, your daughter or your son to work, and, oh, this is my colleague, and, and there it is in full screen. Um it is, again, what are these people thinking behind the scenes to know they can do almost anything and the arrogance of not being caught? And that that in itself is the big problem. Here this guy's watching one to four hours on a daily basis of pornographic images on his EPA computer, and we're paying him for it. We are paying him for it. Um, 
then you look at this mismanagement that's going on. You, uh, you, you know, you go on a little bit further there to talk about the idea that uh, there was a last case that you laid out in there, a case uh, of sexual harassment by a guy named Peter Jutro. Tell me about that. Yeah, uh, this individual uh, was a high-ranking EPA official in the Homeland Security Department of the EPA. Okay. First of all, go figure, why does EPA need a Homeland yeah, Security what, what's that? person there? Right, because everybody needs one because let's create another bureaucracy. Uh, but this individual was investigated for sexual harassment. The uh, case that triggered the investigation was a 21-year-old intern um, filed a complaint, made a complaint. Uh, Jeez, about, where have we uh, heard that before, about 21 20- year old interns, but right, go ahead. Yeah. Right, and and in the investigation, I mean, this is sick. I don't know why I'm laughing. He mentioned that he did admit that he brushed up against her, and he had taken photos of her feet. Okay. And then after the investigation was pursuing, they found other women. I think over a dozen women who also had problems, uh, sexual harassment concerns with this individual, and. Management knew about some of these claims, and yet they still promoted him to the to another position. Wow! Yeah, I, I see in, in your article where you said he he asked the intern what turned her on and what excited her, but he claimed that inquiry was asked from a career standpoint. <laughs> really? Yeah, I bet right. you I bet you it was asked from a career standpoint, especially if he was a higher up. And he denied brushing up against, attempting to kiss her, grabbing the intern's buttocks, but he did admit to taking pictures of the intern's face and toes. I, you know, I, whatever happened with just going to work, doing your job, and coming home? I I don't know. 16 females at the EPA had inappropriate interactions with Jutro alone. Touching, hugging, kissing, photographing, making double entendre comments with sexual connotations. Um, and and they, these 13 women, 13 of the women said, uh, yeah, EPA didn't act on any of these. Didn't act on any of these. Are we, are we kidding? I mean... This is a joke in itself, uh, a very sick joke, unfortunately, not one that we would laugh at. When we come back, I want to switch gears with you a little bit, Tom, too. You've been uh, taking a look at where taxpayers' funds were used to cheer harmful water regulations. We're seeing a brand new uh, EPA reg this week on water. We're going to talk about that when we come back with Dr. Tom Borelli. He is a senior fellow with Freedom Works. He'll be right back with us here on The Gary Sutton Show on News Radio 910 WSBA. Welcome back to the Gary Sutton Show. We're with Dr. Tom Morelli, Senior Fellow at Freedom Works. Um, you mentioned it this week at, at the EPA and uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers are expanding governmental reach again by issuing new clean water regulation. And it's known as Waters of the United of the U.S. United States. What's this all about, Tom? Well, originally, it goes really go back to uh, the 1972 Clean Water Act, and the original Clean Water Act uh, defined water that would be regulated as those would be navigable, uh, in other words, big bodies of water. Right. But what's happened over the years through uh, Supreme Court and environmentalists and lawsuits is that gradually the definition of what water bodies can be regulated has been broadened, broadened, and broadened. And the latest is the final rule that was issued uh, last week that essentially allows the EPA to regulate just about any water body uh, in your backyard, in your ranch, uh, that they want to. Because what they did is they defined the types of water Water they could regulate, and the key word they used is if it's in a significant nexus, in other words, close to a navigable water, they could regulate it. But the way they define this, they essentially can really regulate any water body they want uh, on your private property. And there's significant concern by uh, land developers, by people who are property rights, farmers, ranchers, that the EPA and environmentalists are going to use this to stop any development or any work on your, on your private land. Yeah, and, and it looks to me that what they did is anything that's even remotely connected to a large body of water, they now say, well, you know, that affects that. So, you, you know, obviously we have jurisdiction over that too, right? No, exactly. It, it, it's like a game. You keep following it. Uh, you know, the original Clean Water Act is really focused on large bodies, and they went, you know, deeper and deeper, really, in, into our own private property. And again, this is another one of those regulatory overreaches of the EPA. You have a law that was written, and they keep redefining what they want to do. And it no act of Congress, by the way, just like uh, EPA's clean uh, power plant rule targeting coal-fired power plants. 
These are not based on new laws written by Congress. This is written out of the executive branch gone wild. Remember, President Obama promised to use his pen and his phone. Well, this latest EPA water grab rule is exactly that. I think what bothers me a lot here, you know, people say, well, you're not in favor of clean water. No, that's not the case at all. I'm, I'm very much like the idea of clean water. I don't think, uh, you know, because you don't <laughs> like what the EPA is doing, somehow you're opposed to clean water or anything else. No, it's it's the idea of the way it's being done and this, uh, uh, you know, uh, environment Nazi kind of look at things that we can come in and, and do whatever we want to do. And it goes right back to what you said a moment ago that uh, you can decide uh, no change for you. You know, the old uh, Seinfeld thing about uh, the soup Nazi. Uh, no change for you. You're not going to make change on water anywhere. And, you know, uh, that's what you have, isn't it? No, no, absolutely. And, and again, you, if any, any really objective individual could, could be uh, l- looking at this issue and say, well, this is for water, so you're not a land grab. Blah, blah. But always look at the process by which the EPA does things. As I mentioned before, first, this isn't based on a new Congress, uh, new laws. In fact, Congress is trying to pass laws to, to rein in the EPA. They haven't been successful yet. But also, the process, EPA was coordinating efforts with radical environmental groups and Obama's Organizing for America, his activist group, to load the public comment period with comments saying this was a good regulation. So they basically used taxpayers' money to mobilize comments to a public comment period to steer the results in their favor. And then Gina McCarthy, the administrator of the EPA, sat there at a hearing and defended the rule based on the public comments she was getting. Something like over 85% or something was supportive of the rule. Well, of course, because you paid for those comments. Right. And so the idea is you you, you paid to, to make the pom-poms to cheer on the water regulations, basically, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the pom-poms, the, the van, <laughs> to bring the cheerleaders out. The buses, yeah, the, the cheerleaders' outfits, probably, yeah, right. the whole thing. And, and then get them up on a stage behind President Obama, who comes out and says, this rule will provide the clarity and certainty businesses and industry need about which waters are protected by the Clean Air Water Act, and it will ensure polluters who knowingly threaten our waters can be held accountable, period, no questions needed. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, EPA is running a shadow government. There are deep concerns that EPA, uh, you know, former administrator Lisa Jackson was coordinating with anti-coal activists on a private email account. Sound familiar? Uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, Gina McCarthy, the current EPA administrator. Congress is trying to find out her text messages, uh, what was in her text messages, because there's concerns she was coordinating with outside environmental groups. They're basically running a shadow so, government. So here's the thing. And, and 30 seconds left, Tom. Why are you and I talking about this? And I don't see this out all over the news this week. Why isn't this out there being just absolutely attacked by everybody and saying, are you kidding me? What's going on here? Well, because it really is a flood of issues that people really can't keep up. But, you know, thanks to shows like yours, my ability to come out and write and talk about these things, we are educating Americans. And Americans want to do more. They could read more about my commentaries at conservativereview.com and then also FreedomWorks. I hope people will do it because I, I tell you, I mean, we're seeing more and more of this kind of thing. And just what we talked about this morning puts uh, kind of icicles down your back a little bit and stands your hair on end. Uh, which is what some of these people were doing with some of their pornography and other things. But that's another story. Uh, Tom, thanks so much for joining me this morning. I appreciate it. I, I look forward to our next chat very, very soon. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks so much.